I just want to say that you should cut the audio from this whole first segment of this and put it on your coaching podcast because that was like a mic drop moment. <laughs> okay. Hey, my sisters, Stephanie Dozier here. You heard the voice of one of my students, um, and I'm here on the morning of November 6th. So depending when you're listening to this, it could be uh, within minutes or hours of me releasing this bonus special episode to our podcast feed. Uh, because we had a call this morning in one of my um, coaching program. And um, given that we all share the same values, the election, the result of the election yesterday, November 5th, 2024, has affected all of us and has the leader of the group I led a discussion, a conversation around how to care for ourselves, how to lead ourselves through these results, um, and also how to lead others. Um, and I recognize that the conversation I had that you're going to be listening to next uh, was between professionals and coaches. However, we all agreed that a good chunk of this conversation would be helpful for any women listening to this episode, um, that you are a leader of yourself, a leader of others, or a professional. So I decided to put it out there on all my podcast feeds in hope that it can serve many, many, many of you, no matter where your career, your <laughs> credentials are, I think it can be helpful. It was recorded live, literally three hours ago. It is completely unproduced. There's no music. There's no cutting out white space. So it is not the same quality as usual. But I believe it's more important to get this out there quickly, that some of you will benefit from listening to this conversation. If you are on the It's Beyond the Food podcast, if you're listening to this from this place, we will be back with our regular produced episode next Tuesday. Um, and if you are on my other podcast feed, because I have another podcast called On Diet Your Coaching, On Diet Your Coaching is a podcast feed specifically designed for anti-diet, non-diet professionals and coaches. We will not have a next episode because this podcast feed is currently not producing new episode, but you have 90 episodes to look um, uh, and listen to before. I hope this serves you well. Would love to hear from you. Uh, you, I would love for you to reach out to me on Instagram DMs and tell me if this episode was helpful to you um, and if I can support you in any way. Uh, it'd be my pleasure to respond to you or just drop me a note if it was helpful. would love to hear from you. I love you and I'll see you next time. Um, so it is our... I'm looking at the date, November 6th, uh, group coaching call. And I, I want to take the circumstance of what happened yesterday. So depending when you're watching this, um, yesterday was November 5th, uh, 2024, which was the American election in the U.S. Um, so we're not even 12 hours in this moment right now after the result was um, announced. And I want to take this opportunity to coach you as the individual, but also talk about what do we do with that as a professional? How do we deal with that as a, an entrepreneur? Okay. And I, and I want to remind you that these are all, none of what I'm about to say are fact, and this is the way you need to behave. Okay, and this is the place where we're going to get started. Based on where you are located, if you are European versus Canadian versus American, there's a different level of impact that this result may have on you. And also based on your own personal activism level, this may have a different impact on you. So as I'm discussing this and you are being met with my thought and you're thinking, oh, Stephanie is telling me exactly what I need to do. I just want you to recognize that. 
right? I'm not telling you what to do. I am presenting you my thoughts so you can have a perspective, but I want you to form your perspective after that, okay? And you are encouraged to reflect on your own perspective. So I'm gonna coach you first as a human being uh, this is where self-leadership, in events like this, this is where self-leadership is so important. How are you meeting yourself based on the different parameter, like where you are located, your level of activism? How are you meeting yourself with these election results from yesterday? Are you clear on what you're feeling and what your needs are? Are you giving yourself the space, the time to feel, to look at your thoughts? Like, have you done a thought download this morning? To pause, right? This, this concept of responding versus reacting, right? And I, I can see it as I'm watching social media unfold, how much people are reacting with their sharing and their story from a place of reaction instead of giving themselves a time to pause, to look at their thoughts, look at their feeling, so that they can respond instead of reacting. So regulating your nervous system to be able to respond instead of reacting. One of the things that I keep reinforcing all the time is creating safety. And I want to remind all of us that safety is not created only from your brain. Safety is created from your body. So as you are taking the time to regulate your nervous system, are you doing it just through intentional thinking or are you doing it from a place of being in your body touching your body, moving with your body. I, I, some of you have seen me like do my safety routine. It's very intentional why I cross my arm and I like tap myself because safety is created as much physically as it is mentally. So as you're regulating today, bring your body in that space of regulation. The second place where I want to go with you this morning is my thoughts as to what happened and my thought as a human behavioral expert on to what happened yesterday in the results of those elections. And the first place I want to go is to use this event to once more demonstrate the neutrality of a circumstance. The election is a circumstance that is neutral. Proof being the result, right? 52, 47, 51, 48. They're not finished counting, but proof is, let's say 50, 50 of the population in the state have a different thought about who should be president, right? So the election is a neutral circumstance. And I think this is one of the, if you had any doubt, look back. Like This is the proof as to the neutrality of circumstance. Now, how do people make decisions about what they are voting for, who they're voting for, right? That also can be explained with the cognitive behavioral model. The, the decision are made through the beliefs that we have. And this is where... The election is neutral, and then we drop into the belief system of people, right? People based on their identity, based on their past experience, based on their family beliefs, based on their religious belief, based also in the indoctrination of the election process. We have to remember that the way, at least I'm not sure about Europe, but I know in Canada and America, the the three months leading to the election is a prime example of indoctrination. We blast a message out there over and over and over again to influence people's thoughts, feeling, and actions. And the indoctrination 
is widely different between the two party. We had a party that indoctrinated people into fear, into economy is terrible, we have to do something. And we had another party who indoctrinated people into a message of we need to make a change and we need to support people that are not capable of supporting themselves. Two different levels of indoctrination. People were exposed to that constantly. And as we know, our thoughts originate from our belief system. So people had a thought when it came time to make their choice, right? I will vote for, economy is terrible, so I need to vote for. They made a decision and that's their A line. Their A line is the action they took when they filled up the ballot vote, the vote, vote ballot, whatever. One of the two ways we can talk about it. But when they vote, that's their A line. So their choice came from the way they felt, insecurity, lack of safety, fear, their thoughts, their belief system, the election process. So people acted based on their own beliefs. Hence why when we think about the choice, neither choice, whatever people voted, are neither intrinsically good or bad, there's no moral value to people's thoughts and belief. It's a choice that they've made. It's a reflection of their belief. It's a reflection of their value. And this is to me where privilege comes in. Because with each level of diversity, it brings a level of complexity, right? This is intersectional coaching we're talking here. And we had a prime example of that again. This is why this election to me will be so historic and such a teaching moment for us in the human behavior field because we had the traditional white cis men versus multiple level of diversity and identity. A woman of a prior oppressed race particularly in this, in this country, and a woman who choose to not have children, a woman who has her own money, or a woman who made her own career. Like when you look at that, the female candidate, Kamala Harris, she was the liberation of everything that we have been working through for the last couple of hundred years versus the traditional white cis men in a patriarchal white supremacist society. So with, when we, Put someone in a position as a leader with different level of diversity and more, more we accumulate the level of diversity, more uncertain it becomes with people. And when people feel unsafe, when people feel uncertain, their bias comes alive. Just a fact of life again. Our bias, not us as a group, but as a human being, that's how the brain works. When we feel unsafe, if we're not aware, if we don't take the time to pause to respond, we react from our past experience, from our biases. So when a population feel uncertain, feel that the world is coming to an end, that we're unsafe, people that are privileged, may not be aware that they're acting onto their biases. And I was watching a, um, it was a Canadian news broadcast, but it was um, the victory speech of um, the person who won last night. And I was the stage was feel, filled with his team. If you take a moment to look at the stage, the stage was entirely white made primarily 70% of men. And it, that's when it hit me. That's when like my state of being paused and looking at this and like, yeah, like people are afraid they're going back to what has worked for us in the past. People are reacting and even people that are oppressed sees the white, cis, strong, rich man as a safe option.
If you're a student of human behavior, you can see that neutrally, right? And that's why I want to have this discussion with you because you, to some degree, you are all coaches, right? I want to bring this lens on it so you can, at some point in the next couple of days, if it's not available to you right now, to be able to look at this circumstance through the lens of coaching, because there's a lot to learn for us there. And we can talk about it more after. I want to bring you to my third point. What do we do with this? Right? I talked about self-leadership at the beginning. Now I want to talk about you being a leader. You being a leader to your clients. You being a leader to your audience. When it is available to you, once you've regulated yourself once you brought the circumstance neutral when you were able to see through that that could be today that could be tomorrow that could be in a week from now that could be in a month from now the time is not important but when you are ready to show up as a leader for your people show up as a leader to me, being a leader is showing up as a coach. It's being of service. Each one of you has a different version of what service looks like. That's my service right now. I'm servicing you as a coach to help you see that differently, bring you different opinion. Think about what does it look like for me? Does it look like for me to do a free coaching call, to do some regulation, with my clients? Is it to reach out to my private client? Is it to do something on social media? What does it look like for you to be in service, understanding your ideal client and the circumstance? Could be, a talk again, talking about coaching, regulation, riding the wave, the concept of like you could do a post on responding versus reacting. Um, you can talk about cognitive distortion, catastrophizing, because there's a whole bunch of people who are catastrophizing this morning, right? Like, if you can detach yourself and look at your stories, like take 15 minutes a day to look at the story from the perspective of a coach, whoa, does it tell you a lot about people? Like, there's a whole bunch of black and white thinking, catastrophizing. <sighs> what can you do in this for you? The other perspective I want to talk to you about is marketing. Because you have a business through this. Okay? Here's my number one advice. Be relevant. Do not ignore what is happening. If you cannot talk about what's happening, if you don't feel safe talking about what's happening then at least show up as a coach. But do not ignore what's happening. Ignore how your people are feeling and pretending that nothing has happened. Ground your message for, I don't know, weeks. I don't know how long. It, I don't know if it's going to last for a couple of weeks, a couple of months. This uncertainty, is it going to stabilize itself? A lot will come in the next few days on how the candidate are approaching the circumstance and how people are going to feel. But ground your message and your values. Ground your message in calm. We're fortunate in our group here that we don't practice pro marketing. So nobody's in fear-based marketing. But in case you were, this is not the time to go out there and tell people how terrible food is and how terrible fat phobia is and how terrible diet culture is because you're just adding on to the load of anxiety that people have. You have to remember that most people that have not worked with you are do not have resiliency, emotional intelligence. So do not add to their load. Okay? Talk about your value. Talk about coaching, talk about helping people be calm. In my opinion, it is better to say radio silence if you are not capable of being relevant. 
don't post, don't say anything if you can't show up from a place of relevancy and support and service. The last point I want to talk about, and then I'll open it up for general discussion, opinion, and question, what do we do forward? And I want to quote something that I saw Rachel Roger post today. It's a quote from Martin Luther King, and it's as followed. Freedom is never voluntarily given by the oppressor. It must be demanded by the oppressed. To me, this is our work. This is the proof of the work that at least I do. And I know all of you do, and I hope you see yourself as that. This is the proof that our work is needed. I am a coach who helps women liberate themselves. I help you build here financial liberation. So you can run your business the way you want to. You can say what you want to. You can coach women the way you want to. You can express your value. You can be an activist. You can be the fuck you want to. Right? I build, I help you build your mindset, your nervous system tactic for you as a woman to be liberated. I help women create that freedom and that liberation through liberating themselves from the indoctrination. So women no longer see the white cis man as safety. That women can create safety within themselves and no longer need to lean in to patriarchy, the size of their body, their beauty, their capacity to have children in order to feel safe. They can liberate themselves from all those patriarchal, oppressive standards. I want women to be able to create safety for themselves so they can go out there and lead change, demand change, demand freedom. And for women particularly, in the, the one line of diversity of oppression I specialize in, which is women, we need to liberate ourselves from being our body, being our beauty, being our body size, being the way we eat, being our beauty, being our age. That's the work that I do, and that's why my work matters. How do I do that? I help women liberate themselves from indoctrination by creating self-awareness through coaching. I help women tap into their superpower, which is self-trust, by teaching that to them through intuitive eating. I help women tap into their safety by making peace with their body, by doing body image work. I want women to be confident so we can go and demand freedom and dismantle patriarchy, diet culture, and wellness culture. That's my lane. That's how I contribute to this. And that is how I am moving forward. I hope that can serve and inspire you. So you can think, take that after today, after this moment right now, and reflect, what does this mean for you? Thank you for having listened to me. I hope it served you well.